Amen. Welcome to the victory side, folks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome to Word of Life Church. So glad we could be together this morning. Those of you joining us online, realize, join right in. Get up off your couch when we praise, when we praise. Like one person said, when we shout, you shout. When we dance, you dance. Hallelujah. Join right in. God's right there with you. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. Whether you're right here in the tri-state area, in Colorado, wherever you're at, around the world, Man, God is there with you. We're glad you're joined with us this morning. How about you this morning? You're glad you glad to be together? Well, we're going to get right into the Word of God this morning. But as we do, as you're seated, why don't you find four or five people you haven't greeted yet? Smile at them real big. Give them a high five. Give them a hug. Thank God the pandemic's over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's going to be a great day here as we continue on with the service. We're going to receive communion today. So we'll, uh, if you uh, didn't pick up your elements on the way in, the ushers will get those to you when we get to that portion of the service. By the way, for all of you that are new this morning, guests this morning, I'm Lauren Hershey. I'm the lead pastor of the church here. And so we're glad that we could be together. Those of you online, we are going to be receiving communion together. So you might want to get up and go grab some crackers, or, um, a tortilla, uh, some grape juice, and uh, we'll celebrate the Lord together. Amen. 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 As we get started here this week or, and this morning, let me just say to you, over the next few weeks and months, we're going to be doing what we can to inspire doing what we can to raise the level of the value of faith, to inspire us to move up to new levels, to inspire us to advance. Now, why? Why are we going to do that? Well, Habakkuk 2.2, God speaking to the prophet Habakkuk, who, by the way, was going through miserable circumstances. And some of you may be there this morning wondering where God is. That's where Habakkuk was. Where are you, Lord? These things are running over us. And God spoke to him, showed him the deliverance that was coming, even though it was going to be, in a way, it was going to get worse before it got better, but then it was going to get real good. And he said in the midst of that, the just shall live by faith. So why do we want to raise the value of faith? Well, the just shall live by faith. And this word live is so cool. I love it. If you look at it in the Hebrew language, live, it means to stay alive like we would know. But it also means be preserved to, or to flourish Amen. or be happy. So why do we want to raise the value of faith? Because as we walk in faith, you'll not only stay alive, You'll not only be preserved, I may be glad to know you're going to be preserved in the mess we're living in today. Be preserved. Not only that, but you're going to flourish. Flourish. Man, we, man, take that thought from God and just put it up against those lies that we've been hearing on the news or our feelings are telling us about. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to make it. The whole earth's going to hell in a handbasket. Not you. Amen. Not you. Say it with me. The just shall live by faith. And that means me. Now, not only will the just live by faith, and are we raising the value of it, but you're receiving from God of the wonderful things that he's provided for you through Jesus Christ on the cross is determined by your faith. In the book of Mark, the book of Mark, Matthew rather, chapter 9, verse 29 it's recorded as Jesus was ministering and traveling, two men came up to him and cried out to him to get their eyesight back. And he said, Jesus said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? See, it's not a question of, of whether God is able. He's able. But it's a question of whether we believe. He he. he I like to think of it this way. If you had a great big pile of wood shavings, and in the midst of that was some steel shavings, maybe you couldn't even see them. But you had a great big strong electromagnet that you passed over the top of those 
wood shavings, there'd be a whole lot of shaking going on as those steel shavings rise up through that wood and stick to that magnet. The power of magnetism would draw that steel to join with it. That's what our faith works like. It draws the blessings of God. Jesus was another place he was traveling, and a woman came in the press behind, and he said, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole, because she'd heard of Jesus. Malachi says that when the son of righteousness arrives, the prophet said, there will be healing in his wings. And the Hebrews understood the wings of his garment to be the hem. She recognized Jesus to be the Messiah of God. She said, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. She pressed behind in power. She touched and power went out of Jesus and healed her. And he turned around and said, who touched me? And he said, to the, I'll leave some of the story out. But then he said, woman, your faith has made you whole. Amen. I thought it was God's power. It was God's power, but it flowed to her through her faith. Why are we raising the value of faith? Because according to your faith, it's going to be done unto you. Amen. Not that God doesn't love you or loves people differently from one another. But that faith that's in your heart as it grows, as we learn to trust. Faith will draw that out of him. And in that story where those two blind men came he, and said, Jesus said, do you believe I'm able to do this? They said, we believe you're able. And Jesus said this, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. So why are we raising the value of faith? Because it comes to you according to your faith. The New Living Translation says, because of your faith, it will happen. How many of you understand it's God's will that everybody be born again and become a child of God? That's God's will. But only those who exercise their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will they receive that gift of eternal life. So why do we want to raise the value of faith? Because oh, I want us inspired. God is stirring my heart. God has been stirring my heart that there's at least some of us, if not all of us, he is, he is wanting to raise up to a new level of living. And so to get there, we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Why do we want to raise the level of faith? Because, well, let me just say it to this way. In Mark, the second chapter, Jesus was in a house teaching. He was teaching. And so many people crowded in the house that you couldn't even get in. You couldn't even get in the door. And here came a man who was paralyzed, born on a stretcher by four people. And we say sometimes it's good to have four crazy friends. Amen. Four Amen. crazy faith friends. <laughs> what do I mean? Men who, who, people who, when, you're, when it looks like there's no hope, what did these guys do? They went up on the roof, tore the roof open. Amen. What? To lower... The, the stretcher to Jesus. And I have a friend that is a Greek scholar, and he tells me that when it says that Jesus was in the house teaching, in the original language it says he was in the house of him. In other words, if you ever wonder why Jesus never got upset or the owner never got upset about a hole being torn in his roof, it's because it was Jesus' house. But be that as it may, Jesus had those four friends lower that, those four friends lowered that stretcher into, in front of Jesus. And the scripture says in Mark 2, 5, when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw their faith, can you all say that? When he saw their faith. See, what is faith? Faith is an, inter, an internal conviction. It's an inwrought principle it's of, of confidence. It's an inwrought by the Holy Spirit, an inwrought confidence, trust, reliance in God and all he says. But understand this, don't ever think that it stays inward. Because if there's no action to it, it's not faith. If there's no action to your faith, your faith's useless. Matter of fact, in the book of James, it says that faith without works or faith without actions corresponding to what you say you believe is dead, being alone. So when we say the just shall live by faith, 
be preserved, flourish, stay alive, Amen. be happy in life. Don't ever think that when we say the just will live by faith, it's just, yeah, it's a matter of my head believing or even my heart believing. Faith is action. Why do we say that? Well, right here we see it. Jesus saw their faith. I'm going to be bold and say it this way. If you can't see your faith, your faith is not alive and producing. So why do I want to inspire us and raise the level of faith? It's because by faith, you're going to stay alive in this messy day. By faith, not only stay alive, you're going to be preserved by God. Not by your own strength, but by God and the angels all around you. You're going to not only get through, you're going to flourish. Flourish. Hallelujah. And instead of being miserable and depressed and hunkered down, bunkered down, you're going to be happy. Yeah. Glory to God. Talk about victory. So understand, it's going to take some action. Now, let's look back in Genesis chapter 26 at an account with Isaac. Genesis chapter 26. We're going to read seven or eight verses here. Genesis chapter 26, and then we'll go back. Or we'll kind of comment as we go through. We'll just see. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. There was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. I guess we'll just comment as we go through. There was a famine in the land, and not the first famine. Let's recognize, and some of us in this room are old enough to realize, there's nothing new under the sun. And there's been tough times and rough times and difficult times before. There's been people for thousands of years saying, I never thought I'd see it this way. So we're just in the bunch. And stuff has happened before. Stuff is still going to happen. There was a famine earlier in this land, and here they are again. There's a famine in the land. But I want you to understand where Isaac was when he left to go to Gerar. Okay? Isaac, there's an occasion in the Bible where Abraham, the father of faith, ended up having a sexual relationship with a handmaid named Hagar and, ha and trying to accomplish the promise of God through his own effort. And she ended up getting pregnant. Well, Abraham's wife, who'd instigated the whole episode, got upset and demanded that Hagar be thrown out. So Hagar runs out, she goes away, and she ends up camping by a well a well named Beer or Beer Lahai or Lahai Beer Lahai Roy, and God shows up and speaks to her, and says that the child that's going to be born, He's going to bless, He's going to make a mighty nation out of it, just like sand upon the earth. And she named that place where she was Beer Lahai Roy. High. You can tell how much of a Hebrew scholar I am not. <laughs> beer looks like beer. I hate to say beer. Here's my beer can. The high Roy. What's that mean? It says the well. The name means the well of him. The well of him who is alive and sees me. In the midst of her miserable situation. Maybe some of you are in a miserable situation. He's the same God today as he was back then. He's alive and he sees you. And his blessing is there. Why do I bring that story up? Because that's where Isaac was living. He was living in that place by the well of him, by the well of him who lives and sees me. And then a famine came. And sometimes we're that way. Life's clicking along pretty good. And then suddenly, what's up with this? And we have to make a move. And so he went to Gerar. Gerar is a word that means a few things. First of all, it means pilgrimage. 
And it also means combat. And pilgrimage, combat, and something else. <laughs> it, what I want you to see is he went to a place, he left this place of blessedness, left this place of peace, left this place where he was had experienced God's presence and God's touch and God's provision. And he went on a pilgrimage. What's a pilgrimage? It's a journey, oftentimes into unknown or unfamiliar places. A person will go on a journey, a trip, for the purpose of expanding their understanding of the meaning of life, the meaning, getting to know themselves. You know, the, the Muslims make that pilgrimage to Mecca, hoping to find themselves and finding what life's all about. We're on a journey with Jesus. Can I get an amen? And so... Isaac sets a, the story really sets a good picture for us because Isaac, he's now moving. He's now moving, going to a new place. And let's read on. He went down to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Egypt. And the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land. And I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Now God had blessed Abraham. Notice what he goes on and says, verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and my statutes and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now look at verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Now here, I want you to see something. Here was Isaac in a different situation. I believe that God is stirring our hearts. A lot of your hearts. He's got more for you. He's got a next step for you. Now, Isaac, I want you to catch this. Isaac was in that land where God told him to be. And he sowed in that land. And he reaped a hundredfold. That's a good crop. Now here, I want you to see this. Isaac sowed in the land, not in the offering. I bet you never thought you'd hear a preacher say that. <laughs> I want you to understand it. Sowing and reaping is a reality. God put it in the earth. And, and other places in the scripture, we're definitely told that Sowing has to do with giving, right? With, with giving offerings, with tithes and giving offerings. And according to the seed you sow, that's what you'll reap back. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. But there's another side to prospering. There's another side to prospering. And that's what I want you to see this morning. Is that Isaac sowed in the land. In his land. And reaped a hundredfold. First of all, Isaac heard from the Lord. He got that word from the Lord, stay here. I mean, there's a famine in the land. It looks lousy. It looks terrible. Let's go down to Egypt. Egypt in the scriptures is always a type of the world. So God is saying to him, don't turn to the world for your provision. Okay, in our day, politically, economically, you can say, we're kind of in a famine. Maybe you're watching your budget. But let me tell you something. The famine and inflation has nothing over on God. God's arm is not shortened. His provision is not diminished. His pantry is full to the full. So he's encouraging us, don't go down to Egypt. Don't look to the world for your resources. Don't panic and don't trust that. Stay right here in the land where I tell you. He heard from the Lord. That's the most important part. He heard from the Lord. That's where it starts. 
Psalm 127 one says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. I don't know how many, how about you, but I do not want to go through my life working as hard as I have and do only to get to heaven to realize it was for nothing. That it was all my own idea. It was all my push, my shove, my force, my flesh, my ideas. And the hand of the Lord wasn't upon me. And it's all, what is all this stuff? It's mighty nice firewood. When the earth is destroyed by fire, poof, it's all gone. Where's the start? It starts by hearing the word of the Lord. Romans 10, 17. So then faith, that confidence toward God, that trust, that reliance, comes. You don't cook it up. You don't generate it. You don't get up in the morning, do exercises, go strengthen my faith, strengthen my faith. No, it comes from outside of you into you. Well, how does it come? By you hearing the word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God being delivered to you, being preached to you. In Acts chapter 26, verse 18, the apostle Paul was sent to a certain group of people to open their eyes, to turn them from the power of darkness to God. Uh, Luke, can you put that scripture up? Luke, uh, Acts 26, 18. He was sent to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, notice six next few words, that they might receive. He was sent that they might receive. Now, if they're going to receive by faith, faith has to be in their heart. How's faith? How's God? God wants them to receive. Can we remember last week's message? That is God still smiling on you? Yeah. yeah. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be able to receive. He wanted these people to be able to receive forgiveness and deliverance and blessing. Well, how? He knew what it was going to take for that to happen. They were going to have to have faith in their heart to receive. And to deliver that faith into their heart, he sent Paul down to preach the word to them. The word of God is a container of faith. When you hear it, you open it up and it comes to life on the inside of you. That's the only way it comes. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. Why are we raising the level of faith? Because it's absolutely critical to your reception of the things of the Lord that he wants to provide to you. It's already done in Christ. But whether your magnet draws it to you or not has a lot to do with the amount of word that you've heard that's created that confidence and trust and reliance in your heart to look to him and obey him rather than going to Egypt. So it starts with, like Isaac did, he heard the word of the Lord. He received that word. He took it to heart. How do we know that? Because he acted on it. He took it to heart and he obeyed it. Romans 10 says it's the obedience of faith. Not just a legalistic or enslavement or anything like that. But it's, it's, it's an action corresponding with what you believe. He acted on it. He sowed in that land. Right there in that land. He didn't go to the mailbox and look for a check. He didn't go up to people and talk to them about what he's believing for so that they get snuckered into letting him mooch off of them. No, what did he do? He heard from the Lord. And he trusted. And he acted. And what happened? He reaped a hundredfold. Friends, that's such a process. That's how we're going to do it. That's how it works. But the thing is, just because you know how faith works doesn't mean you know how God's going to do it this time. That's why it's absolutely essential that you hear the word of the Lord. You know, that, that spiritual song. I can't even think who does it. You might think it's a pop song. It's kind of a spiritual song. I'm kidding. Should I stay or should I go? 
I mean, that's the question when you go to God. You know, what, which way do I go here? What do I do? So, here's my, here's, get the Lord's directive. Again, God is stirring your hearts to move up. What's step one? Get the Lord's directive. Hear from the Lord. Well, how do I do that? Well, the word of God. All right, the word of God will speak to you and show you some things generally. It's amazing how God will take a verse. I mean, anybody ever had this experience? You're reading the Bible and suddenly you stop and you've read that portion a lot of times before and you stop and say, when did they put that in there? It's like, whoa, something just got expanded. You know, you know uh, computers weren't the first thing to minimize stuff. God's got so much packed in his word and he can unpack so much in a moment. You know, the word of God can, can make it stand out. I remember one time when I was working at the Bible school, we didn't have a lot of money and the savings that we had had dwindled down. And when we had moved to Oklahoma to go to school, I'd bought a bicycle and I was riding my bicycle back and forth to, to work. And one afternoon at break time, I was sitting, actually sitting on the ground, leaning with my back against the apartment building we were painting in. And I was praying. And I said, Lord, should I sell my bicycle? You know, we needed some money. Should I sell my bicycle? And I started reading the scripture, got over to John 15, where Jesus said, you've not, you've not chosen me, I've chosen you and ordained you that you should bear fruit and you bear much fruit and your fruit should remain. Now that didn't say, Lauren, you need to keep your bicycle. But to me, that's what it said. Are you with me? So, because my fruit, I, I, God brought it into my life as fruit. It was to remain. See, I'm telling you, the word of God will speak to you. Also, the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's the guide into all the truth. He'll guide you into what the scriptures mean, how it applies to you. But he'll also guide you in your life, which way to go. He'll, he'll show you things to come. He'll make you brilliant. Amen. He really will. You don't have to have all the answers, just one. And he'll, and he'll give you that one you need. Make you look great. That's Abraham's blessing, by the way. Genesis 12, God said, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. I'm going to make your name great. Amen. In other words, I'm going to make you influential. I'm going to make your life have an impact. I'm going to make you... So that when you speak, people listen. Amen. And listen, we saw here in Genesis 26 that the blessing of Abraham came upon Isaac. And he sowed in that land and reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. I want you to understand. Let's just pause for a moment. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. The Apostle Paul writes to us on this side of the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. That if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. You're blessed. Say it with me. I'm blessed. The same blessing that rested upon Isaac that causes his actions to be so fruitful in abundance rests upon you. God's hand rests upon you to cause everything you do to prosper. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, her delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he and she meditate day and night. And they'll be like trees planted by the rivers of water who won't see when the heat comes. They'll never cease bearing fruit. Their leaf will not wither. And whatever they do will prosper. Glory to God, say it with me, I'm blessed. Yes. Ooh, take that and let those strongholds, those imaginations get knocked out of our minds. Let's, let's rethink our future. Yes. Proverbs 10, says, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Amen. Don't have to get a second job, third job, fourth job. Stay up all night. Ruin your family because you're working your heart trying to, trying to run the rat race. 
No, the hand of the Lord rests upon you. Where does it start? You hear the word of the Lord. That's where it starts. Blessing of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says this, For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Say, rich? Well, yes. And if you look at this group and you compare us to most of the people in the world, there's not one poor person in here. You're all rich, thoroughly, abundantly supplied. We have to decide what's the difference between a want and a need. And the level that we're planning, we have to have an objective look at where we're at and be grateful. Amen? Amen. God didn't, Jesus became poor. I don't know where you came from. I came from a fear of not having enough. So I'm just telling you that when I saw that verse one day, that he, became, he was rich and he became poor for me? Amen. At that moment, that meant a lot more to me than the other th- many of the other things that he provided. You're delivered from poverty. Amen. It has no hold on you anymore. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. God wants you to hear the word. Take it to heart. Now, how are you going to know what the word of the Lord is? Well, the word of God, the spirit of God, your unction, the inner witness on the inside. You know, sometimes we're all the time looking outside for a word. When God's put his word in us, his spirit lives in us. He, he, he doesn't want us to live like a horse or a mule that have to have a bit and be led about. He's put something on the inside of us. We're here sons and daughters, folks. The spirit of the living God lives on the inside of us. How are you going to hear the voice of the Lord? He's going to speak in your heart. He's going to speak in your heart. Or your desire. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desire of your heart. That means he'll put the desire in you. Philippians 2, 13, it's God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, chapter 16, verse 3, When we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and lean not to our own understanding, but always acknowledge him. He directs our path. We commit our works to him, and he causes our thoughts to be established. And provide Bible version says that that means he causes our thoughts to come in line with his will for us. So how can you know the will of God? Well, what do you want to do? Well, could it really be God? That I want to do this and it's what God wants me to do. Listen, uh, the abundance of scripture that I just quoted to you tells you if your heart is right with God and you're one with him and your delight is toward him, he's shaping that in you. That's why it doesn't get weaker, it gets stronger. It's because almighty God is trying to get you to plant in your land. (laughs) Plant in your land. Run, run your thinking past some counselors, past some mature people in the Lord who can, you know, tell you you're nuts or not, <laughs> you know, or, or affirm that you're thinking soundly and, and always filter these things through God's character. Through God's character. You know, is it, are you being covetous? Are you being greedy? No. Well, does it help people? Is it, does it draw people to Christ or push them away from Christ? Is it life-giving? Is it sound thinking? You know, Scripture says you didn't receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and safe thinking. You know, walking with God is normal for us believers. The world doesn't understand it, but you're not part of the world anymore. So what I'm saying to you, Isaac sowed in the land, and he reaped a hundredfold. I want to ask you this morning, what is your land? What's your land? I believe God wants me to bring this word to you to sow in your land. What do I mean by that? Well, to sow to your development. 
to sow into your efforts, to sow into your business, your industry, yourself. You know, is there a skill that you can develop? Is there a book that you can read, a course that you can take? Is there an investment that you can make as seed sown in your land to which the blessing of God will come upon and cause that to multiply back in your life? Because say it with me, I am blessed. blessed. See, you're... We're not talking about, I'm, you're not just cooking something up in your own thinking. Yes, right. Almighty God is the one working in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes. But you can't just sit there and think about it, friends. Yes. You can't just sit there and believe it. Even if you've heard from the Lord accurately, and this is God, this is the step he wants me to take. You're right in what you're saying, yes. but it's dead until you move. Faith is action. And the just, whoo! The just, those who are made right with God through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will stay saved, stay alive, be preserved, flourish, and be happy by faith. Come on up. Let's praise team. Come on up. For God so loved the world. So I want to ask you right now. What's your land? What's God speaking to you? Take a piece of paper. Take your device out. Click on that notes thing. Start making some notes. Now. Well, Pastor. We're going to talk in, in future days, I think. I, I, would most exp- I would think about the fact that faith speaks. Speaks to mountains. Like the Corinthians, the scripture says, we believe, and just like they believed, and so they spoke, we also believe, and therefore we speak. But now listen, a faith that speaks is first a faith that seeks. I want to encourage you this week, starting right now, turn your heart toward the Lord, tune in that station. Lord, what are you speaking to me? What do you have for me? What's my next step? Because I'm telling you, if you're staying still, you're going backwards. Because God is moving in the world today. And like we sang this morning, there's millions out there needing our Jesus. For Jesus on the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over all the enemy. Jesus to our family. Jesus to that neighbor down the street. What seed does God want you to sow? into your land, your development, your progress. You would think, well, that's that's selfish. No, it's not selfish. Isaac wasn't selfish. Let's follow his example. Isaac wasn't selfish. He was simply walking in faith, taking steps according to what God said to do. Can I get an amen? Amen. So write down and then, then make a choice. Make a choice to no longer live no longer live putting up with stuff. Years ago, I was in Brazil at a friend's missionary's home, and you walk onto their place, and every tree was perfect, fruitful. There's no yeah. weeds. I mean, nothing dead, no dead branches. His name was Bud. And I said, Bud, how do you do that? Everything around you is just flourishing. Everything's producing fruit. It's alive. It's looking great. He says, well, it's pretty simple. I just cut out all the dead stuff. I just get rid of it. And suddenly everything looks great. I asked the Lord one time, how do you, how do you keep? How do you get a clean garage? I'd worked at it and worked at it. How do you get a clean garage? He said, just get rid of the junk. You know, so... What's the Lord speaking to you about your land? You know, what steps to take? Hallelujah, so we flourish. I'm telling you, as we progress, as we develop, you ain't got time for that stuff anyhow. You know, like one person says, yeah, but it just brings back memories. Well, then take a picture and throw it. You know, move it on, sell it, you know, give it away. 
What's God speaking to you this morning? I believe he's speaking. I believe he's stern. I believe that, that he's stirring our hearts with there's something new. There's something more. There's something greater. And listen, it starts, it starts as you let God's highest desires, highest ideals for you come into your heart. And it grows as you align your highest ideals with his. So it starts with salvation. It starts with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our redeemer. He's our deliverer. Through his blood shed for us, he broke the bondages off of us and welcomed us into a brand new potential. Hallelujah. Say it with me. The just will live by faith. And that means me. I'd like every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Jesus died for our sins according to the scripture. He was raised from the dead on the third day, according to the scripture. And he's alive, and whoever calls on his name will be saved. Online, just push that raise my hand button. Put in the chat window. Man, it was a great message. No, don't put that. Put in the chat when I'm receiving Jesus. If you're here in this place, we're going to pray a prayer today, right now, where you can receive that, where you can leave that bondage of darkness and death and destruction where the Bible says the thief comes only to steal and kill and to destroy you can go out of the domain of the thief and into the kingdom of God's dear son of life and love and purpose and fruitfulness forgiveness healing all things pertaining to life and godliness can be yours he said pastor I believe what you're saying about Jesus And I want to receive him this morning. We're all going to pray right now. But if you say, well, why do I need to receive Jesus? Well, I'll just say it this way. The scripture tells us that he is the only mediator between God and man. So this is the way I put it. If you don't receive him, you're out of luck. If he's the only road to God, the only way, the truth and the life, then without him, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us is perfect on our own. No one can be perfect on their own. There's not one person in all the world who 24-7, 365 days a year does it right. Not one. And only Jesus' sacrifice redeemed us from the calamity and curse of our own sinfulness. But he did it if you'll receive him if you'll receive him deliverance and blessing immediately becomes yours you say pastor while we're praying I'm going to be receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior if that's you I'd love to know that I'm praying with you on the count of three would you raise your hand one two three go ahead and lift your hand thank you thank you thank you thank you online thank you thank you Hallelujah. Angels are rejoicing, folks. Angels are rejoicing over you coming home. Let's all pray together. Dear God in heaven, thank you for what you did for me in your son Jesus. Right now, I turn from how I've been living. I no longer trust in myself. I trust you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Making me your, making me a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.